continuing where I left off, uh, I did a 2D bouncing ball. Uh, this is the... Uh, just waiting for it to load. There we are. This is what we had last time. So now to do this in three dimensions, uh, because this is just a flat 2D one. So I'll just create a new scene. And um, yeah, so uh, let's do this. So before, what I, the first thing I did was I drew the ground flat. So now I'm just going to do it more as a three-dimensional make a three-dimensional room within which to bounce this ball so yeah just you have to establish space right you just it's like setting the table you prepare the paper for it because without this I mean if you look at it without it's just flat right you have nothing you have no frame of reference whatsoever. So very important to um, set the table. All right, so let's see what do we got. All right, so uh, I'm going to throw in another layer and um, just begin, I suppose. Um, actually, wait, one more thing I should do is let me just uh, shift. I'm going to have the ball bouncing and hitting here. This is the impact point, so I'm going to, I would like to have it hitting a little bit lower, and I'll just, uh, let's uh, put that over there. And just extend the um, the room up. So yeah, it's this this is like the the one primary difference between animating something that is just seen from the side view versus something that's in three dimensions is uh, how you set up your workspace. So we're gonna lock the transparency, lock the transparency of that, and um, throw in a new layer. And yeah, let's just begin. So I'm just I'm just gonna draw the ball like impacting on the ground to begin with. And um, I'll go back up one frame and just, oops, I'll uh, stretch that up and add in a blank frame uh, just prior to my drawn ball. So uh, I'll turn on the uh, light table. And um, yeah, so once again, um, I guess I'll just have the ball up here. You know, I don't feel like there's quite enough space. Um, let's fix that now. So just... Uh, I'm just going to unlock these uh, these layers and uh, yeah, let's, um, let's get some more get some more breathing room because the thing is, that the ball is impacting here. I want the ball to uh, want to have I want to have the ball maybe about flying from that high up. So yeah, like this is this, just like spend some time, you know, getting your setup right. You know, don't don't try to fight with a poorly positioned camera or poorly you know positioned um, three-dimensional space or uh, you're just gonna it's just gonna be a, a horrible horrible fight um, for the rest of the exercise so um, yeah you know just get things set up properly and uh, save yourself the trouble later on so uh, let's fix that up let's redraw that it's great okay so I'll just go back one frame and um, you know, while I'm while I'm holding that thing down, I'm just you can see I'm gonna figure out where to draw that ball next. I release and bam. All right. So that you know that's a trick you can do is just um, go to the next frame and figure out where you want that neck where that ball should go. Figure out where the starting position is and then jump back to the previous frame and draw it in there. So this kind of exercise of like this little ghosting thing is a very handy trick okay so i got my two frames um throw in a, a frame before frame before and after great um so i'm gonna have it uh, go from here to here pretty much the same thing um and uh, i guess the only difference is maybe prior like for the early frame uh Oops. Just drawing a um uh, a long a longitudinal um split on it or hemispherical split. Okay, so same deal. So the hemis now we're we're underneath our horizon line. So uh, the hemispherical split changes. Bam. Pretty fast, pretty easy. Um, yeah, I mean, like after I explained, kind of the two uh, D sphere, the three D one is not much different. Um, 
it's all about how you establish your space. Anyway, that was really fast. Um, why don't I make the... I'll, I'll make a, another ball and I'll bounce it off um, a couple of the walls. I'll send it in at, at an angle. So we'll just get to see how that, uh, how that behaves. So, um, yeah. Uh, let's clear those frames and blank that one. And, yeah, let's... Uh, actually, let's use a different color. So I'm going to send this ball flying in from the side. And in this case, you know, I'm just going to do it as a... Mo I'm going to use motion trajectory lines... Um, and yeah, let's just go to the next frame. So that's where it's flying. I imagine the ball is going to strike here. So I'm just marking off the impact point and, um, throw in another frame. So from here to here, um, probably going to fly up. You know, what? I'm going to make it so that the ball, uh, takes a bit of a downward ricochet. So one, two, three, uh, probably going to have, um, a, another kind of, squash flat impact and then uh, another frame so one two three bam and then fly off and all right that's that's not bad um i want i want to have something where the ball actually comes towards the camera so let's right so, so i'm just showing you this workflow of how to how to figure out you know let's have the ball fly in this way. And um, I'm using these motion trajectory lines. And you'll notice that I'm having them converge because I want them to fly from off camera on high, right? And it's going to come down, coming down this way. Um, like you can see on this camera, right? it's coming down and going into depth. And, um, you know, if you want, like on this one, one frame, I'm just going to draw the whole thing. I'm going to have the impact point here. It's going to hit here. Um, I imagine it will bounce. Uh, down to about here, strike there, and then fly up, hit this part here. There'll be another um, impact point. And then uh, have it just uh, bounce maybe by drawing multiple lines, right? I can right, draw it like a ribbon trail, right? Because if you draw a ribbon trail, a ribbon trail is a three-dimensional thing, right? So you can see how the path is, is coming from on high. It's going away. It's going down. Um, it's going further away, right? So this this is this is a a motion a three dimensional model. It's a three D model of the um, of the motion trajectory of this this ball striking. So the, the thing about you know animation is you've got to have good control over perspective and the physics. And um, yeah, this is just like there are these really rough drawings that ha that give you a good sense of space. So having that as my guide, I'll just turn the transparency of that sucker down, put it into hold mode. And um, yeah, now I have this faint motion guide, which I can um, I can use. So I'll throw in another layer, and let's just get to it. So I will have my ball flying up this way. Uh, throw in another frame. I'm gonna have it uh, strike or Im so impact here. Um, another frame, and now it's I mean it's practically out by the numbers. So. Bam, flatten out here, um, rebound, and sh flatten out here, and then ricochet out. So these, you know, draw these extra lines which show, you know, that it's, it's spreading out, um, get that really, you know, and don't don't be afraid to um, draw like additional lines like right you can you can wireframe an object to make it look more dimensional don't just draw the outline if you know if you if it find if you find that it helps you um, main, maintain perspective and volume do it just just do it stop trying to make it's not illustration all right it's not illustration you're gonna make some ugly drawings but they're drawings that should really show dimension and volume and um and the thing about being messy and with that it just means that you're not spending too much time on one frame right you can flick 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 right you should be spending more time in between frames meaning See this? I'm in between frames. You should be spending more time flipping the frames and being in between frames, seeing the frames in motion. You spending too much time on one. If you're spending too much time on one frame, you're not seeing them in motion. You're not. You're not um, gauging their movement. You're not animating because animation. The one thing animation has over illustration is motion, right? So you're going to be drawing. 
these um you're 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 simulating a transition between physical states right so you're showing bam bang okay so there's this is coming off way too fast so i'm gonna throw in an in between maybe i'll I'm gonna redo that one. Let's make it. I'm gonna make it so it partially squishes with the ground, right? So even though it's a ball, you know, it look at how it how it's pliable, right? It's really it's like a droplet. Right? You can feel like that mooshing going on, right? It's really mooshing, and it's and it's it's all about like if you look at any one of these individual frames, you're gonna be like, what the hell is that? It's a terrible illustration, but. When you look at the transitions between frames, you want a good animation, right? So, oop. so I want to have it motion up against that one. Motion, motion. That motion must show good motion. Okay. And um, yeah, maybe this one I'm gonna. I like drawing impact lines. Just it helps. It helps with the feeling. Um, I'm gonna redo this one. Yeah, I can definitely redo, right? And and get that cross section, and then we're in a blank frame here. So I'll just draw one. All right, great. So now that I have that, okay, let's let's play that. Probably gonna be too fast. Not bad actually. Great. So yeah, um, you know, you can if, at this point you can still add additional in betweens. Um, yeah, you can still add additional in-betweens if you feel they're necessary. Um, if it is moving the way you like it. I, I like the way it's moving. I mean, I could add more to get it. Like, if I played this at 12, it'll probably work great. Right? I can add more in-betweens to make it so it's at 24. Um, and then when it comes to like these these uh, kind of um, splat lines, right? I can just track one of these, these splat lines. So, so I'm going to look at this one here. There's this little V-shape, so I'm going to just track the motion. Okay, then do the same for that one. So it's, it's a bit of a, it's a painstaking process, but you'll get much smoother results if you just pick one of these lines and follow its motion outwards. So you play that, look, bam, right? You get this really nice poofing, right? Same thing here. Okay, so it strikes here. So, so same deal. I'm going to track that motion outwards. I'm going to just take a small piece of this. Good. And then this side here, so it goes out in both pieces. And then over here, so I'm going to rewind. Bang. So here. And then the lingering pieces. Right? Boom. Let's see how that looks, right? So it really it's it's a it's it's a neat thing, you know. Doing these kinds of little effects is uh really easy to do. It doesn't take much time. It's all about having a good workflow. You pick one little teeny thing and you can track it. Um, a lot of what makes an animation work is in your preparation. If you prepare properly and um, you have good draftsmanship skills, especially with drawing things dimensionally. Pff, animation can be a lot of fun. It can be very easy if you do things the easy way. But uh, I think a lot of people tend to do things the hard way, and uh, they make animation a lot harder than, um, than it has to be. Uh, and it doesn't have to be uh, hard, and it can be very enjoyable. So there you are. All right, bye.